For those of you who don't know me, I'm Lucy Lugio, and I wanted to thank Lula Council Number One, which if I'm, I am a member of, and mothers and grandmothers for having this forum. Uh, I am married to Herbert Rubio back there, way away. I've been married to him for 35 years. We have two children. Our daughter lives in Dallas with her husband, Christopher. Her name is Jocelyn, and our son Jason lives here. And I'm a proud product of CCISP schools. I went to Crockett Elementary. Cunningham Junior High and graduated from Moody High School in 1970. I've lived here all my life, which is 62 years. I'm not ashamed to say it. And uh, so therefore, uh, I've been volunteering for many, many years. I volunteered uh, back in, when I was a teenager at Memorial Hospital to kind of strike her. I volunteered at Boys and Girls Club. And then I had my children and got involved with PTA in the local level, the council level, and the state level. I served there for 14 years. And then I decided to run for school board, and I'm proud to say that I've been a public servant for school board, uh, Board of Trustees District 2, for 14 years. My good friend Priscilla had asked me to run, but she turned out, and I was a little um, not sure that's what I wanted to do because I've been proudly serving CCISD. However, uh, in December of last year, she asked me to please take um, into heart um, if I would run. And I decided, you know what, maybe this is the right decision for me. So in, um, we're supposed to have a lunch on January 10th. And then guess what, she had a stroke. So uh, I've decided to take this challenge. Our city has to have a new direction. We uh, have attended city council, both Mr. Gordy and I. We both addressed the council several times. And the most disturbing thing is when you address the council, you have three minutes to speak. It is your right to speak to your elected officials. But when they respond negatively back to you, that is unacceptable. It happened to me, and it's happened to Mr. Gordy. So shame on them for doing so. Uh, I want to bring respectability back to city government. I want to tell you that I live in District 3. I live right behind Ayers, which is right there behind Los Encinos Elementary. That fire station number 18 that everyone's been talking about, that would affect me, my family, my neighbors, my friends. And shame on the city council and the city mayor, not the mayor, excuse me, the city uh, manager, for stating that the voters, okay, you voted for it, but guess what? It's not necessary anymore. Well, guess what? It is necessary. We, the voters, voted, and guess what? Our will shall be done. A promise made should be a promise kept. And therefore, I'm telling you that that needs to happen. I want to make it happen. I want to guarantee that the firefighters, our police officers, should be staffed correctly. We have too much violence. Every time you turn on the TV, you hear someone's being murdered, someone's being shot, a lot of fires. And my husband works at a chemical company. He used to be a first responder there at the plant. And he told me it's unacceptable to have three people on a fire truck unacceptable. And so shame again for the city for allowing that. So I'm here to tell you that I want to be the voice for District 3. I've been proud to represent the school district and done great things there, but it's time for a change, and so I'm willing to do that change. So I want to be that voice. Thank you. I'm Lucy Rubio. I'm running for City Council, District 3, and I'm number one in the ballot. I'm Jack Gordy, and I'm running also for District 3 City Council. Uh, I've been here since 1974. I was in the military, and I retired in 1976. And uh, the reason I stayed in Corpus Christi is one reason, and I like Corpus Christi, but I'm married my wife from here. From, uh, she lives in Molina. We've got 13 children, and for all the grandmothers out there, we've only got 84 grandkids. <laughs> 53 great grandkids. One of the problems is the only one I'm living in my district. <laughs> so that didn't hope for it. But uh, I'm glad I'm here. I'm glad of uh, uh, Lulac. Uh, and also, uh, the District 3, I live right off of Weber, close to Holly. And uh, I've always spoken up for, for the city. But uh, District 3, there's a lot of things we need. Priscilla Lee Al was one of the best council members that we ever had. She always spoke up to the people. And when I went down to city council with a complaint, she always came to my house 
we sat down in my living room and we discussed that complaint that I went before the city council with. She was the top council member that would always check them out. These other council members, when we go down there to public comment and speak at the council meeting, evidently when we turn around and walk away from the podium, they just forget about everything we said. As far as I know, they never investigate a complaint of the system that comes down in front of them. I was told by the mayor that she didn't appreciate anybody coming down there with complaints. Well, I hope she don't think that the city staff is going to tell them something wrong. Uh, and I've always uh, spoke up for the uh, people in, in, in the city. Uh, if somebody, I don't care where they live in the city, if they call me and they got a complaint, I'm going to go out there and check it out. And I will go to, I will check it, call the different departments and check it out. And, and, and then I will, if I can't get action from the city staff, then I'll go in front of the city council. But that problem is the city council don't pay any attention to what we got to say. The one, the city council, we got nothing. That's why we need changes on this city council. Not just one of them. We need to get rid of all of them. We can't get rid of one, but we can get rid of six of them. And we need to. Because, like I said, we need a council member that cares about the people, listens to the people, and pays attention to us when we go down there. Not only when we go down there, when we call them on the telephone. Some of them are return calls, but the majority of the council members we have now, I guess they don't want to talk about problems, but they won't call me back. But uh, like, like Lucy said, it's, it's up to the voters. Uh, uh, I've always been there for the people, and I will continue. If I, even if Lucy gets elected, I will continue to go before that city council. Because Stop. If I see something wrong, I'm not going to stop. I'm going to continue, continue, continue. And even if they don't fix it, I'm going to keep going out and saying something about it. Uh, I've been after the city about violating state law. For about, well, 1976 is the first time I pointed out that the city won't honor the agreement with the state of Texas. And I'm going to continue complaining. And I guess you can call it complaining, but I, I call it bringing up to something that's been like I've always said, a lot of people got complaints, but they don't say anything about it, and then they wonder why it doesn't get fixed. If you ignore it, don't expect it to get fixed. Any questions for my man from the audience? Okay? Jack Forty, thanks a lot for going to all the council meetings and Lucy too for all your time as an elected official. And Jack, I almost ran for city council in district number five, but I'm not ready to leave the fire department. I told Rudy about that. I mean, you, he almost had an opponent, okay? Um, that said, uh, this question is about Fire Station 18, and, uh, and I asked the at-large candidates, and they did do some of their homework, but apparently they maybe didn't finish all their homework. There was a study done in 2005 called the Triad Study. That was the first study that said we needed that fire station, okay? And then comes along the fire chief, the new fire chief, Robert Rocha, a year and a half ago, he did his own study and said we needed that fire station there, okay? So that's two studies. And then we conducted our own GIS study, the International Association of Firefighters, and it said that we needed not only one station for Corpus Christi, but three more stations for Corpus Christi. Then Mr. City Manager Ron Wilson decides to do his own study, MGT study, with Travis Miller, I believe, uh, given the, uh, uh, the results to the City Council, the present City Council, and they say we don't need any additional firefighters and we do not need any additional fire stations. That study, believe it or not, was given no input from the Firefighters Association. It was a, a manager-driven study, and the fire chief gave his input as well, but I find it hard to believe. Three studies say we need that fire station that the voters voted for, and one study that the manager drove himself says we don't need it. What is your input on that? And we'll keep it up for 30 seconds. 30 seconds. <laughs> unacceptable. That was unacceptable. It was needed. We and it, we voted for it. That's the most important thing. It's disrespect of the voters. And you want us to go ahead and vote on these new bonds? There's no trust in city government. I'm sorry. That's what I told the caller times. While I got the endorsement, you know, I would have preferred not to have gotten it from the caller times because it was a, I hate to say this, half-ass endorsement. Okay. Uh, so you know, either give it to me now. But I think, you know, I think that we, the voters, 
you bring it to us and we vote for it, then we might as well, we need to have it. Where did that money go is the question. Where did that money go? It needs to happen. I, I went over to visit Rose, Rose Acres yesterday. It was annexed two or three years ago. And the nearest power station is where? Horn Road? Unacceptable. I'll have to agree with you on that one. It, it's just another case of proving, you know, proving that this city council doesn't care. The voters voted on it. They said, we want a fire station, but we got a city council. And the city council now, who are they blaming it on? They're blaming it on the city manager. But the city council could have said, yes, build it when they said it would, when the people said they wanted it. But no, uh-huh. The city council decided to do what they wanted to do, not what you wanted to do. Uh, and I think it was, uh, it should be built. The people feel that it's needed. The fire safety, our department says it's needed. And so there's no doubt that it's needed. It's just the fact that we need, like I said, somebody on there that cares and do what the people want. One more question. Okay, it's a two-part question, but I'll try to keep it simple. If you were on the council today, how would you vote on the Chapman Ranch annexation, and what will you do on the council in order to fix our neighborhood streets? I'm against annexation, and uh, I am wanting to make sure that there is money somewhere embedded in that budget. What I what I tell people is that once you get into that budget, how easily they find money for other projects, but they don't find the money for our roads. It is, it is just horrible to drive down the roads and you're constantly having to, you know, go bumpity bump bump. Uh, it needs to, our roads need to come first. Neighborhoods comes first. And we need to get the money, we need to find it. I'm, in, I'm pro bringing business. Uh, I keep saying in District 3, we have so much property that we can bring new industry. We can go ahead and on, uh, on uh, Bear Lane, the extension that they're wanting, they wanted to bring more industry down there, industrial park and they don't want to extend the road either on Junior Beck. So one more time, there's ways to bring more money, but the city doesn't want it, they're ignoring it, and it's shame on them again. So I get on there, I want to make sure that we have those serious discussions. Thank you. For the annexation of Chapman Ranch, the people stood up in front of the city council, six out of nine, and said, we do not want to be annexed. Now that's the citizens speaking that lives out there saying we do, and the property owners, we do not want to be annexed. If this city council annexes that property, again, it's proof that they do not care about the people that live in the area. Uh, and they keep saying, oh, the city, the, the uh, NAS is against it. If the government is against the wind farm, they can stop it at any time. The government can say, no, you cannot build the wind farms, and they won't build them. They cannot build them if the, if the U.S. government says no. But that's what their the city staff or city council is trying to blame it on, NAS, which NAS on their own could stop it at any time if it interferes with flight operations. Uh, and the people that, that, that wants to build the wind farm, is all, the city thinks they're going to collect property tax off the wind farm. Well, the guy made it real clear to the city council, if you enact that property, we won't build a wind, no wind farms on that property, so you won't be collecting no tax on the wind farm. That, the builder of the wind farm is a little bit smarter than the city council, and that don't take much smarts. <laughs> uh, the uh, other question that was uh, is about our streets. When, I, when they come up with the street user fee, I thought that everybody in this city, I don't care if you're retired, disabled, or what, or how old you are, you're going to pay a street user fee. And I thought that the street user fee would also be used to take care of our neighbor's, neighborhood street. They think, oh, the people come to Corporate Christian, the only thing they use is the main roadway. Well, when they come to Corporate Christian, they also drive in the neighborhood to see what their neighborhoods are, see if they want to, if the people want to move here, they can drive through their neighborhood to see what they look like. And and I think they should be fixed. They, they, they waste money, waste money, but they don't look in ways to, to save money and spend it on the, and the people in Corporate Christian. Thank you. 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 Thank
I don't know if most of you realize it, but this coming year we're going to collect $10 million more in property tax, the city is, $10 million more than it did this year. That could be used for neighborhood streets. Uh, and they say, oh, we can't do it. Well, can't is not an answer. That's just an excuse. 